Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a really amazing segment. I'm super excited about this. Women face unique medical challenges and joining us to give us some insight and solutions are two fantastic doctors, two fantastic people here at Burrell and I'm really excited to introduce them to you all. So first joining us is Dr. Layla Townsend. She is the Associate Professor in our Department of Preclinical Medicine at OBGYN. And next to her is my fabulous friend, Dr. Gabby Rangel. She specializes in internal medicine. Ladies, welcome both to the show. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> when I knew we were going to be talking about women's health, um, it hit me hard because I think of my mom, I think of my sister. So you all tell me, what are the top challenges that women are facing when it comes to health? Yeah, absolutely. Still at the top of the list is gender bias when it comes to treating our female patients. So, okay, you, you gotta explain it to me, right? What do we mean by gender bias? Well, there's still stereotypes that prevail when women present to their doctors, whether they be male physicians, female physicians, the stereotype of women being overly emotional, exaggerating, too dramatic, at times can interfere with the way that they are treated in the healthcare system. Their symptoms or, and or their complaints may be minimized or dismissed. So I was gonna say, they're gonna be dismissed. So somebody comes in and says, you know, I've had this headache for three months now and they're gonna think they're just being dramatic and exaggerating? Probably, or yes. they're saying that it's maybe distress yes. or you're not sleeping adequately. Dismissive. Or just, mm -hmm. yeah, just mm -hmm. give other excuses instead of actually looking into it whether it's if it was an elderly patient or a male, then, okay, what's going on? We should get a CT, we should do this, mm -hmm. I will send you to the neurologist. So it's just all this, the way we grew up, the way the female is pursued yes. as just, yes. you know, saying yes. they're hysterical. Yes. Um, they don't really, right. or physicians or other providers don't really right. pay attention to those right. symptoms that are interfering with our day-to-day -day life. So we want to let our viewers and our listeners know, you know, these are the challenges, but we want to offer solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if the, first, if the first challenge that we're talking about is this gender bias, what's the solution? Listen to your patients and believe them. So, okay, so <laughs> what, what, what do we feel? The doctor's just not listening to me. So I'm, the, I'm that patient, so what do you do? What do you say? Well, you can always get a second opinion. You could always change doctors. Mm -hmm. um, or you could tell the, your doctor, you know what, doctor? We I have been telling you about this for so many times, and I don't feel you're doing anything to help me. Mm -hmm. Is there any way we could get a study or we could do something because I want to know what's going on? It's concerning to me. Yes. But also, as a patient, you need to tell us what your thoughts are. Right. Don't it, just dismiss it. Yeah, and I think it's important that we as um, healthcare providers, we educate our patients. We want to empower them to do their own work, to advocate for themselves, mm -hmm. okay? And I agree with Dr. Ron Hell. You know, if they, they don't have to just stop with us. You, they can seek out one, two, three different opinions if they choose. Mm -hmm. There are support groups, especially for women who have, let's say, certain diagnoses of chronic pelvic pain or endometriosis. Mm -hmm. there, there's a community of women who are willing to help. But the key is empowering your patients. So let's talk about the, the second uh, health challenge mm. that you guys wanted to share with us. Mm -hmm. What's another health challenge that women face? Uh, it's, um, it's, it would be the prioritization of women's health. Uh, so often, and I think Do Dr. Ron Hell will agree with me, is that we in our, in our society have a tendency to, s to focus solely on the reproductive health of the patient. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're pregnant, you have a baby, and it, it's like we're just our uterus and our ovaries and our fallopian tubes. And you're so much more. We're so much more. And when you think about it, um, look, just looking at the statistics, I mean, women make up over half of the global population. They make up over 50% of the U.S. population, um, they account for over 60% of the American workforce, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, they are 80%, they make up about 80% of healthcare decision making in their own homes. Very true. We were talking about that yeah. before, before we started taping. And if you think about it, the female household or the woman is taking care of the partner, the husband the parents, the children, Absolutely. that's a lot of responsibility. It is a lot of responsibility. Yes, yeah, so on top of that, like Dr. Townsend was saying, we work. We have 
our professional careers, then we have to go home and take care of our household. We forget about ourselves. We forget about taking care of ourselves. If we have, we think it's a cold, we just take maybe some home remedies, mm -hmm. over-the-counter stuff, mm -hmm. and we forget about us and we focus more on somebody else. Mm -hmm. And we have to teach that to our patients too. You have, if something comes up that's bothering you, take care of yourself. Otherwise, you won't be able to take mm -hmm. care for others. Thank you. <laughs> is, is there a third uh, health challenge that you all can share with us? I think having access to um, providers or actual insurance. Mm -hmm. That puts a lot of limit on the patients, not just female, but everybody. Uh, some people don't have the resources to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So they just seek um, any seek their friends or go over the border since uh, we're on El Paso. You know, mm. that is that is a very unique mm. uh, uh, situation. You know, when we talk about you know, being a border community, Las Cruces, El Paso, we have our neighbors to the south. I know that from a, for, as a boy, we used to do that too. We would seek medical care in Juarez. Um, neither good or bad, I would assume. Yes. Well, some medications are cheaper over there. And when I was doing outpatient, some of my patients wouldn't be able to afford their medication. That's important, diabetes, high blood pressure. So they would go over the border and get those medications. Mm -hmm. It's okay as long as it's, it's working for them. I think having some medication is better not having, than not having any medication Absolutely. at all. Now, uh, sorry, I was going to say yeah. at Burrell, we advocate for what we call mission medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's reaching out to our rural communities. So that factors into access, right? Yes. Absolutely. Tell me about that. Either one. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to help those patients that don't have access as mm -hmm. much as we can. I know we're also limited for that and we can only do so much. But as long as they have somebody to at least take their vitals and counsel them mm -hmm. on how to be healthy, do better, and look for any warning signs to seek more help. I think that helps out a lot. A little bit can help a lot. Yes, and I think it, it also, in the beautiful thing about Mission Medicine, we take a deep dive into being socially aware yes. of the social determinants of health, whether it be socioeconomic, race, culture, sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important because we're not only talking about it, whether it be, again, um, you know, racial inequities, any kind of disparities, we not only talk about it, we're immersing ourselves into the population. So, you know, they're telling me I only got two minutes left. So I really want folks who are listening and watching to take something home with them, to take something back with them. What, you know, words of advice would you want to leave them? You know, from everything that they've heard, what would you want to say to people? If you're a female, take care of yourself. If you have a female in your household or, you know, brother, I'm sorry, mother, sister, mm -hmm. a kid who's a female, and take care of them too. If you see something abnormal, let them know. They probably don't know themselves because they're so focused on doing something else for somebody else yes. that they forget about themselves. You know, because we have very little time. Is it a, a, a Latino thing? Is it a, you know, does, does um, heritage and race have a factor in this? I would say so. It's not 100%, but the way you were brought up, determines a lot of the decisions you make. Absolutely, I would have to agree with that. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can have a cultural component, and that, would, that requires a larger discussion than what we have yes, now. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have, that's yeah. gonna be another show. That's another show. Yes, yeah. We're definitely going to invite you back. Yeah. Dr. Townsend, uh, Townsend, any last words that you wanna share? You know what, the last words I would, you know, if I could share with anyone is that, you know, we wanna create for women the opportunity uh, to um, uh, advocate for their own health and to, to live their best lives. Thank you, Dr. Rangel, Dr. Townsend. Thank you both for your time. Truly uh, a very insightful conversation. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, that is our show. If you have any questions or comments about our program or have any story ideas, please send us an email. Our email is communications at burrell.edu. We'd love to hear from you. Also, you can follow us on our social media handles. Our handle is at Burrell College. I'm Sidney Alvarez. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time.